was on this day, April 7th, 1995, some may say the year of our Lord, that Englishman Nicholas Ingram felt the sting of old Sparky. And at 2,000 volts, I'm hypothesizing here, but I'm guessing it were uncomfortable. And before you all start getting Santa mental and menstruating in your chairs, you should probably hear the full story about what he did before you start squeezing out any tears. Okay, since you asked, I'll tell you. Ingram was born to an English mother and an American father, and moved from England to America when he was a teenager. By all accounts, he was problematic from the get-go. Drugs, assault, petty theft, you know the score. Almost like his card was marked. A real limey piece of work. For reasons only known to himself, it was on a Friday night in 1983, around 6.30 p.m., he entered the home of retired couple, no, I said retired, not retarded, of retired couple J.C. and Mary Sawyer, shoving a gun in their face, demanded to use a phone. After this, he asked if they had any valuables, then started pistol whipping the decorated war veteran, firing a shot into the floor to show he meant business. After that, demanding money and the keys to their car, to which the couple obliged. But Ingram went into a rage when he found out they only had 60 bucks. He then tortured the husband while his wife watched. After this, he took him around to the back of the house, tied him up to a tree, and despite their begging, put a bullet into their heads. Okay, two. Once he finished with the Sawyers, the 20-year-old went home where he lived with his parents, cleaned himself up, got a couple hours of shut-eye, and then he hit the road again. And then the Sawyers truck, he went and picked up a friend, and from there, they went to a pawn shop. It was here that he unloaded the items that he'd robbed from the Sawyers, included some watches and the old broad's wedding ring. But it was while attempting to steal another set of wheels with the plan to drive to California, Ingram's amigo must have got the eebie-jeebies, because when Ingram went into the store to buy some beer, he did a runner. Now exhausted, Ingram went to crash in a dive motel. But it was in that motel while watching TV, he saw the news, and he found out that the old broad had lived. And he now realized that half the state were looking for an English guy with fucked up teeth driving a blue pickup truck. And although he couldn't do anything about the teeth, he most certainly could do something about the stolen pickup. So he dumped it at a truck stop and hotwired another vehicle receiving a call about a pickup truck that resembled the one on the news of the couple who'd been shot. Cops checked it out, and inside they found hotel receipts with Ingram's name all over them. A few hours later, while drunk and driving erratically, cops pulled him over, and he knew it was only a matter of time. And he told them that he was the limey with the fucked up teeth that they were looking for. Stay gold, pony boy. Once in custody, He'd gone from admitting to everything to suffering from amnesia and saying he was drunk and he must have blacked out. And even with Mrs. Sawyer IDing him and recognizing his tattoo, Ingram played stupid to the end. You have been found guilty of murder in the first degree. And I therefore sentence you to die by electrocution. As over the next 12 years, that Ingram showed zero remorse. Although his defense team brought up every excuse you could imagine, bad childhood, he'd been on drugs, psychiatric drugs during the trial that made him seem insensitive. He even got himself a girlfriend, although she had pixels for a face. And his parents, along with half of England, petitioned their prime minister to get involved and to stop it. I'm guessing there were a lot of English people who figured that it were beneath an Englishman to die in an American electric chair. But at the end of the day, when the Reaper has punched your ticket, you just gotta walk the line and take a seat. And, uh, quite honestly, I think what we're about to do is utterly, utterly barbaric. And uh, I guess, I guess I can't think of anything more to say about it. But it looked like the bleeding hot anti-death pussies were gonna win because an hour before it was about to happen, it was called off. To understand these cases, there's one thing you must understand. Delay is winning for the condemned. Every instant of delay, he's winning. But I guess because they already had old Sparky plugged in, heated up and ready to go, they changed their mind again. The stay has been lifted by the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. 
and the execution date time for Nicholas Ingram has been reset for 9 p.m. this evening. Which in layman's terms means, sorry to spoil the party, my woke friends, but it's go time. By all accounts, Nick Ingram didn't need his last meal. In the last 24 hours, he'd gone from arrogant to sullen to, I guess, resigned to what he knew he could no longer control. His girlfriend, the one with the pixel face, came and they shared a bag of potato chips and a Coke that she got from the vending machine. She had baked cookies, but fearing that she might have poisoned them, they wouldn't let Nick eat them in case it denied the executioner his payday. In a last statement made to the English papers, Ingram said that he hoped his death proved that ritualistic killing solved nothing. And then the three bears went up to their bedroom. Somebody's been lying in my bed, said the great huge bear in his great rough gruff voice. By witnesses' own accounts, as they strapped Ingram into the chair, he became agitated. Uh, when the warden asked him if he wanted to make a last state, statement, he spit at the warden. Nikki's family would first like to tell us all your family just how deep the hurt in our hearts are for them, and that it has been since 1983. And we would like to say that Mr. Sawyer would be very proud of them. They had so much love in them that they have never talked about hate or revenge. Um, and Georgia could use more families like that. We've never known him to be the kind of person that they described on that night. Um, and can't imagine that he was that kind of person. Uh, we are very hurt with the state that we live in and that we're proud of. It's causing this much harm to us. Um, there has to be punishment, but the punishment of life in prison is enough. They don't have to commit murder because someone else committed a murder, and we feel like that's what it is. Ingram's case was taken up by the British media, resulting in thousands pleading for clemency, including the Archbishop of Canterbury and George's governor, with Ingram's mother fighting the hardest to save her son's life. But despite all of that, nothing goes down bigger in Georgia than a fry-up. And come execution day, the result was a media frenzy. And his last words were, let's get on with it. Yeah.